One person who played a prominent role in the mandate was Winston Churchill. In 1921, he was appointed Colonial Secretary, which gave him the responsibility of implementing the mandates in the former Ottoman Empire. The 1922 White Paper, which was attributed to Churchill, was in fact largely drafted by Colonial Office official John Shuckborough, together with the first High Commissioner to Palestine, Sir Herbert Samuel. It contained a phrase that was central to Churchill's belief that the Jews were in Palestine as of right and not by sufferance. They weren't tolerated for this. It wasn't a gift. It was their right to have the land. And unquestionably, by that point, Churchill believed it. I mean, he already was espousing Zionist views in 1906. He espoused them more strongly in 1908. But then when he went to Palestine in 1921 and saw everything that the Jews in Palestine were achieving uh, in uh, developing the land, and he felt them, they were also a moderating force and they shared his values. Uh, and on top of his belief from before that the Jews, as he put it later, made Jerusalem famous, uh, that this was their land, from, from biblical times was their promised land. From childhood onwards, Winston Churchill was a lifelong friend of the Jewish people, and especially Heim Weizmann. His father, Randolph Churchill, had been a friend of Britain's first Jewish Prime Minister, Benjamin Disraeli, which left a lifelong impression on Winston as a young man. British historian Andrew Roberts empathizes with Churchill's deep respect for the role of the Jewish people in Western civilization. I think as an historian, I would describe the role that the Jewish people have played for Western civilization in very much the same terms as Winston Churchill did in 1920. He said that the Jews have given us a system of ethics that is in um, effect the most um, important possession that Western civilization has. I'd very much go along with that. The uh, Judeo side of the Judeo-Christian tradition, obviously predating the uh, Christian tradition, is something that uh, we live by, and without the Jews we would not have. What he saw in Palestine in the early 20s convinced him that the Zionists were uh, partners with him in the advance of civilization. He was in no hurry to have a Jewish state in the 20s. He thought when the demographic balance was in the Jews' favor, then it should become a Jewish state. However, Winston Churchill, as colonial secretary in the early 1920s, is probably best remembered for the division of Palestine before the mandate was ratified. Following the Cairo Peace Conference of March 1921, Churchill was under pressure to fulfill the aspirations of Amir Faisal and his brother Abdullah. As a result, he drew a line down the Jordan River and 77% of Palestine was designated for Arab settlement exclusively. In 1921, Faisal, which was Hussein's son, who was supposed to get Syria, was having a lot of friction with the French uh, who had the mandate of Syria. Churchill uh, agreed to, based on recommendations by his staff, was to give Abdullah to rule over what is today Jordan. Chaim Weizmann was very angry about it that Churchill made this decision without consulting him or any other Zionist leaders. The decision was made by the British in 1921 at a time when they had no right by themselves to do this. But it was subsequently endorsed and adopted in 1922 by the Council of the League of Nations. An Arab state was also created and established within the boundaries of what was described as Palestine. So in this day and age, when we talk about the establishment of a Palestinian state in what is referred to as the West Bank, it's really the creation of an Arab state. Palestinians are Arabs. This would be, in fact, the creation of a second Arab state since one was created in 1922.